Hello, and welcome to the next entry in my Happiness Perfected vlog. As I mentioned early on in this, or actually just a couple videos ago, that this was going to be a massive learning curve for me, and it definitely is and continues to be. Uh, I'm constantly, you know, trying out new things. Some work, some don't. Uh, I realize, as an example in this case, that uh, we're going to be talking about my roof. Uh, and installing a number of different things on it that I never did an intro to it when I was doing this truck. And actually the footage uh, is one to two months old at this point because I've been getting around to figuring out how to edit the videos. You can, you'll see uh, every time probably changes to fonts and a little intro things that I'm doing. Again, just trying to experiment. Even in this one, you'll notice, or maybe you won't, but I have my AirPod in and I am, I thought that it would actually pick up my voice and allow me to do my videos, but it turns out it doesn't. Um, I did think, or I do think I have a workaround for it or a hack, but uh, it's still gonna take a little more research. In any case, let's get going on this and we can then cut to the footage of doing all the work. All right, so this, time around we're going to focus on as i mentioned the roof and the first step we're going to do is take off the factory install or the factory uh, roof rack i should say and then we're going to install this low profile prinsu rack uh, following that we will move to installing this three-person tapui tent which is amazing I had an opportunity to try it out with my boys uh, and they're about as tall as i am and all three of us can fit in there without an issue. Then we will install the uh, rotopacks. And install is kind of a loose term because really it's putting some brackets on and then uh, you know placing the units on top. But we'll talk about that. And then we'll finish with this 230 awning, which is a 270 degree awning, and it actually goes all the way around the back of the truck. It's quite quite an engineering marvel. Uh, it's super strong and relatively light for what it can do. So with that, we'll, uh, we'll get going. All right. All right, so the first part of this job will be removing the existing factory rack, which you can see here in these pictures. And we'll start at the front and work our way back. Just pry it off. It seems like it's forceful, but Uh, almost pop back on. There we go. There we go. That one's even easier. Two down, two to go. So this middle one, I actually haven't been able to find anything even online how to take this one off except one person did it by putting something underneath and then they, their comment was, well, they broke the underlying piece that was holding it. But I don't think it really matters because I'm not gonna use this anymore. Kind of. Very nice. Up, oh, see, there we go. Just like they said, broke the top top piece here in the corner. Not the end of the world, though. All right, we'll do the same to the other side. Now I'm gonna do it. Well, Lucas, maybe you're right. Let's uh, let's just try. That hurt. There you go. Quite a bit of torque on that guy. Ah, so it's only the outside piece you need to do. And then, look at that, magic. All right, we'll do the other side, and then last piece. All 
All right, well, you may be wondering why I have not moved farther on this project. I did go and get everything all laid out so that I could see the parts. And as I was doing this, you know, just this is a prep, prep method. As I was doing this, I noticed that these main support pieces didn't look quite like what I ordered. And uh, I really just noticed that from the feet, that there's only two feet on each uh, strut, support strut. And the one I ordered for the Lexus GX470 2006 has three. And I looked back at my order confirmation and sure enough, it was correct. Uh, but the one they sent me was not correct. Um, this is actually for Toyota 4Runner, fourth generation Toyota 4Runner. So anyways, needless to say, this will not work. Uh, nothing lines up and this is just one of the frustrating parts, but as my friends tell me to start projects way before you need to finish them, this is an example of that, because now I have to wait. I have to package everything up. I'll send it back. All right, so we've received the new parts and laid them out to make sure they're all good. And then we moved over to installing them on the roof. We started with, there are actually two main support struts um, that go along the length of the truck. They're great actually in terms of their laser cut um, so super strong and uh, at least with this particular truck there's three mounting points as I mentioned in the previous segment which you know gives me even more strength one of the great things about this when I called Prinsu was they said that the rack could handle 300 pounds of moving weight so obviously the torque on it when you drive is different than when it's stationary, but when it's stationary, up to 600 pounds. So this provided a, a really good uh, foundation for me and my, at least in my thought process for what this could hold. Um, anyway, so we went ahead and then started putting the cross beams. These are actually, they're essentially 80-20 uh, bars. They've been custom built by Prince who, uh, with some additional tracks and uh, things in them to allow you to, to mount mounting points to slide screws and other mounting points in it. In any case, um, so we started with the back and then did the front and now we're installing each of the uh, other ones. There's, I believe, nine in total. Uh, and like when installing a car uh, or a wheel on a car, you know, you kind of work in a pattern and you don't tighten everything all the way down. So we didn't. We we kept them loose and got everything in. And then after that, we went back and tightened everything down uh, and it worked out really well. The instructions or one of the videos I saw was to actually do this on the ground and then lift it up. But it seemed a lot easier to me to install this directly onto the roof. Um, so that's what we did. We didn't have any problems with it. So here you see the finished product. And uh, you can see the notches I mentioned that are in there. And this is also a low profile rack. So about an inch and a half spacing in the middle and then maybe two inches on the side, which increased stability and strength. So in this uh, spot, we still had to stick the front wind guard on. And I saw a hint from somebody to uh, put in the, these T-screws uh, in the panel first and then slide the 80-20 bar on it. And then once you get them all in there, tighten it up. And then you, well, before you tighten everything up, you then install it on the front of the rack, as you can see here, and then tighten everything down. It worked really well. And here's just an example of, of the strength. I was having him test it out, although we'll get to that more when we put the tent on. Okay, so we're jumping now to the next piece of the roof, which is the Tupui tent. Uh, it came in one massive package. Uh, so obviously the first thing we did is open it up and pull everything out. Uh, this thing is, is quite large. It's, it's what, like, it's four feet by four and a half feet, maybe a little more, uh, closed and about a foot, I guess, in, in width or height, however you wanna do it. So we, you know, took everything off. Um, there's a lot of packaging inside that you'll see us pulling out and uh, a lot of plastic on it to protect it, you know, when it's being made. So anyways, just going to go through the process of 
stripping everything off and pulling all the, the packages out. So one additional factor number with this is that when this thing is extended, it's actually over 10 feet long, which is why myself and my two boys could so comfortably be in it. So what you see here is we're putting the support beam or bar on that fits onto the roof rack. However, you have to make sure that it fits in a perpendicular fashion to the other uh, support beams that are on your roof rack. And what I discovered when I my boys helped me put it up there is that it, the, it was on the wrong side of the truck. And so I needed to help take it down again. And then like many things, uh, doing a second time as you learn the first and adjust the these cross beams or these cross support bars and uh, I had to rotate them 100 and well 90 degrees basically and then reattach and put them back on but it worked great after that so we're now flipping it over and we are going to install the the ladder itself um they, they gave really great instructions. I ended up looking online because when I first opened the box, I didn't see the paper instructions that they provided, which they did for the record. Uh, and so I, I just watched their online video, which was which was pretty, again, straightforward. Um, so you can watch that. I think the uh, only maybe caveat here as we were installing was just to make sure, like the other things, you don't tighten things down all the way until you get everything hooked up. And make sure you have the ladder on the correct direction so it opens and closes. The, this ladder actually is uh, the thing that creates the support. You'll see later uh, that the tent hangs over your truck quite a bit. And uh, this is the the only thing that supports the end that hangs over. It's, it's a pretty smart design. Right, so as I mentioned, it's all about learning. Mistakes and learning. I'm doing lots of them. Anyways, so when I was talking to one of the techs at Prinsu before I got this rack, he did mention to me that, you know, mounting a rooftop tent can be more difficult because it's how low profile it is, which is one of its advantages. However, the um, disadvantage of that is getting the tent mounted to it with the brackets underneath. So he gave me a suggestion. He said that you can take the cross beams off, mount the cross beams, to the bottom of the tent and then lift the whole thing up and then screw the final two cross beams onto the rack uh, afterwards. I didn't remember that completely. I did actually, but I just said, oh no, we can do it this other way. So I built the whole rack. We, uh, my son and I, you probably just saw, we tried to put the tent up there, but we just couldn't get our hands underneath to mount it. So I uh, took the tent off and I'm gonna do it the way that the uh, tech suggested. So much easier. These 8020 pieces that you see here, these black ones, are actually part of the Prinsu roof rack that I took off. And uh, you'll see then, now we're going to lift them up. They were, as mentioned, a lot easier to put on with the tent off the rack due to this low profile roof rack. So we ended up sliding into space, into place, and then uh, screwing in. There's uh, two screws on every side of each cross beam. And we just gently screwed in each side and then went back and tightened it after we felt like we had a, a good fit. So what you'll see now is the unveiling and you'll get to see just how big this thing gets. So it's uh, it's quite easy to take off and close. I will say we, we did it, uh, tested it again in the field and it was 
easier certainly to do with two people than one, but one person can easily dismantle or sorry, open it up. It's just easier with two closing it because of the, uh, you know, more hands. And the ladder is the, the lever point here. So you use the ladder for really out doing all the work. You can see um, it, it's the, it creates a fulcrum point and it helps you pivot. And then you've got to collapse the ladder to whatever makes it be level. And this is, this is your only support that holds up this side of the tent. I was a little nervous at first doing it, but realized afterwards that obviously uh, Tapui knew what they were doing and uh, it's very stable. And actually camping on dirt, it was also very stable and windy and rainy and snowy, uh, very stable. And like I mentioned, we had, I had three people in the tent, probably uh, 450 pounds of weight on it. So, uh, you know, reasonable amount. In any case, the, the whole thing worked really well. Closing it back up, I should, or should open it up. You should, you can see, uh, it took maybe five minutes, and closing it back up probably takes about ten. Uh, and again, with two people, it really helps. And, and just to kind of finish off, I, I didn't mention this is the uh, Explorer Series uh, three, the uh, was it a tuna, and it's with an annex. That's that piece that you'll see. Uh, in the picture I'll show that hangs over and it comes with uh, material that essentially makes a little room that goes all around uh, every place underneath and then there and figured that would be useful at some point if I need to with bad weather if we're going to stay in a spot for a long time. Uh, could, couldn't say enough good things about this tent though. It's just amazing in the how much room it feels like an oasis inside. And again, super easy to open up. So I'm gonna install my roto packs on my roof rack. And the nice thing about this is, so roto packs, when you buy the, the brackets to connect them to various surfaces, they do come with a small adapter plate, but my Prince 2 roof rack had this master adapter plate uh, that I got, and it fits perfect with the roto packs. So I'm just going to go ahead and install directly onto this. Roto packs come in all different flavors. They they make them for water, white, uh, sand, uh, red is for fuel. This particular one also is a four gallon, and I got two of them so that I can have eight gallons of reserve as I'm overlanding with my truck. Just make sure that. Add the extension. So as seems to be a common theme for me in this build, uh, this is actually the second time I, I did this. I tried to first put it on directly onto my roof rack, but found out because of the low profile, I couldn't get my hands underneath to um, put the bolts in so I could install this onto it. bottom of these, there's two dimples that um, fit right into these, these two nipples that are in roto packs. So they've got quite a nice little system set up. And then this final one I've got. Actually uses a lock so that no one 
And we're good. And now I'll just uh, get one of my kids to help me put this back on top of the truck, and we're done. There we go, finished product. All right, this is the last segment of putting stuff on my roof and this will be focused on the 23-0 awning. Unfortunately, one of the downsides to procrastinating and doing so by two months, because that's how long it's been since my son and I finished doing this install, is that we, um, or I, misplaced the video footage. You also have downsides in terms of, you know, not getting audio correct, and if you don't review it right away, you don't know, uh, maybe angles of the shots. Anyways, like I said, all this learning that's occurring so we're just going to fast forward to it being fully installed and I'll um, go over a few things real quick and then we'll open it up and I'll show you all the features of this awesome awning. All right, so this 23-0 awning is really straightforward in terms of putting on. Of course, I ended up having to do it twice as a result of not realizing something. I had bought uh, brackets with from Prinsu. I installed them on the rack when we were building it and realized that it actually had the awning too close. They're actually great brackets. They they grip over the side and they mount into this 80-20. So I'll be able to use them for other things. But anyways, realized that uh, it just brought it too close. And you can see you need a little bit of a gap uh, with the, uh, the Tapui tent in order to open it up and get your hands behind there to get to straps and, and so on. In any case, so I ended up using the 23-0 brackets, which were... Um, which actually maybe ended up being better. There's three of them. They're super robust. Uh, you can see how thick, thick the metal is. And uh, the, the one compromise I had to make is I had to install them. You can only install them on the uh, cross support. So I ended up having, they're like what, every 10 inches or so. And the only ones that were exposed that weren't underneath the, the tent, I only had three of them. So one's here or two are here and then one's in the back. And as a result of only being able to do it here, you can see the bracket isn't perfectly flush. But I, I will probably resolve that. Uh, eventually, I'll take the tent off and I'll, I'll move the brackets a little bit at that time because I can get to underneath. But that's one of the downsides to having a low-profile tent. However, this is field-tested and it's, you can see it's super strong. You can, it doesn't budge at all. Uh, I'll show you the back real quick and then we'll open it up. So, there's the back. Again, pretty straightforward, and I just needed to go to the hardware store and get some longer, longer bolts than what they provided. But other than that, it really was a straightforward install. Okay, so I'm gonna show you now how uh, the 230 awning opens up and as well as closes, and then I'll also show you, you know, a little of the, a little bit of the features. There aren't many, but uh, what they do, they do well. So this putting it out is super quick actually pretty impressive for how big this thing is. So I have stored up here the uh, extra support beams, but you don't normally need these on in really high wind or bad weather like rain. There's three Velcro straps to support it. And then down and then the the aluminum scaffolding or and I, this is while it's it is a 270 degree awning uh, it's it's actually called a bat wing design
to the roof rack, is what I meant to say. And then I don't tighten it, keep it loose till you get everything installed. And then you do the front, there's actually two uh, fabric loops that you can hook the straps into. And then on the front side, it goes into, uh, there's two tie downs underneath when your car gets shipped. And it goes into one of the two tie downs. Actually, I found it's better to put on the uh, farthest one. And then you, then you can actually pull it tight. As you can see, it, it opens up really quick. And there are two support beams or poles that come, uh, that, are, that are stored with it. And these are used, uh, this is, most of the time this is all you need. Just uh, lift up and then turn them to lock. And that's it. All right, let me do a quick review of it. So you can see underneath, there's a lot of space. And the price of 230, I found uh, it's, I mean, it's any, any awning you get that is this Batwing design, 270 degree, is gonna obviously be more costly than a standard awning, but the 20 zero is, seems like a really good value. For the same price as a couple of other brands, I was actually able to get uh, uh, basically two additional pieces of fabric that create rooms. And so this entire thing can be closed in. And so if you have a lot of bad weather, uh, you end up having your whole, uh, an entire room or area you can kind of get out of the elements. So you can see there it's attached to that part of the roof rack. All right. And underneath you can see the support beams, uh, all aluminum. So it's super light. And in terms of what, taking it out, it took me maybe two minutes, maybe a little longer. So a uh, really good. All right. Well, I will uh, now put it, away. All right, so I'll uh, now go and put this away. It, it's essentially the just the exact opposite of how I uninstalled. So I'll actually speed up the film a bit so that you don't have to sit through watching me do it all. But I will time it at the end and let you know how long it took. All right, so putting it away is really straightforward. In, like I said, just go in reverse. The, there is an order to it, so you've got to obviously take the straps off that are holding it uh, taunt. But then in terms of the support bars themselves, you start with the left side because they go behind everything, and then you do the right. And then you just want to make sure that the material is, uh, there's nothing clumped up. You fold it up like you would a tent, really, and roll it all into the top. And then you take the additional pieces you have, like the extra support beams and stuff, and stick that up there as well. And then you zip it. And the only other hint is just put your finger on the back of the zipper as you go along because you don't want it to catch in any material. But other than that. All right, not bad. That took about just a little over four minutes, four minutes and 10 seconds. And taking it out took me three minutes, but I was also explaining. So I've done it in, it usually takes around two minutes to uninstall. So two minutes to take out four minutes to put back, pretty good for an awning of that size.